Hey everybody, it is Coach Malcolm, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the different ways to draw a chess game. So, we're going to be going through every single way you can draw a chess game. There are five different ways, and we're also going to be talking about, uh, you know, just a little bit of the etiquette surrounding uh, some of these draws and how you can sort of achieve them in the most... Uh, you know, respectable way possible, we can put it like that. So, the first one we're going to go with is what you might know as the most common, I would say. Well, maybe not the most common, but the one that you're probably most familiar with is a draw by agreement. And a draw by agreement means that both white and black agree to take a draw, basically like that. When you both agree to take a draw, uh, the game ends, no matter the position, and it is over. So, let's say in this given position here, which is a drawn position, you know, I made it easy on them. Uh, you know, I'm playing white, I'm playing, you know, maybe I'm playing a different coach. Uh, I play king a4, my, co uh, my opponent plays king a6, and we know that this is just going to be a draw. We're going to end up not making any progress. We can't get through anywhere because the pawns all block any entry points. Um, so we agree, you know, let's just, let's just make it a draw. So what we would do is... After I played my move, I wanted to offer a draw, I would play king a3, I would hit the clock, and I would say, I offer a draw. I'm not going to stick my hand out, because they know what I offer a draw means. So I make my move, king a3, hit the clock, their time starts running, I offer a draw. And my opponent can say yes, they can say no, they can say I'll think about it, or they can not say anything at all. But once I have offered that draw, it is on the table for the rest of their move unless they decline it and they are able to accept that draw and the way they accept it is then they after being offered the draw can stick their hands out and say okay I agree and then you shake hands you should not offer draws when your clock is still running on your move you shouldn't just stick your hand out across the board because sometimes your opponents want to think about it if it's not a pretty simple uh, you know obviously drawn position like the one we have on the board here um, so you just reiterating again, you make your move, you hit the clock, I offer a draw, and you give them time to think about it. They can use as much time as they want. It's like making their move. You can't rush your opponent to your move. So that is our first type of draw, draw by agreement. All right, our next type of draw is called the three move repetition, or when you basically have the same position on a chessboard where it is exactly the same for three positions straight. It has to change, okay? So what do I mean by this? So in this position, we're gonna do an example of a three move repetition draw. So queen g5 check, right? Let's say this black king goes to h8. Queen h6 check, the king has no options. He has to go back to g8. Queen g5 check, the king could try coming up to h7, but this queen is going to keep on checking the king again and again and again and now what we are going to soon have in this position right here after queen um h6 i believe or maybe even in this position queen g5 we have our three move repetition and what does this mean this means that we've had this position three times already it doesn't have to be the exact same moves back and forth you need to have the exact same position no pieces can have gone off the board no pawns can have moved no pieces can have change positions, but you need to have the exact same position three times. So if we look at our notation over here, we have it once, we have it twice, and we have it right in the beginning. So since we've had it three times, after this king h8 move, uh, white or black could declare a three move repetition game because uh, the position has repeated three times. Let's just talk about three move repetition for a second. In this position is an example of how it can be used to get a draw when you are in a losing position. In this position, black is obviously up a bishop. You know, white has a pawn for it, but that is not good enough. We know that. So white is going to go for their three move repetition here because they'd rather have a draw than losing, especially if they're playing an opponent they know who really knows how to use that extra piece uh, in a game that looks like it's approaching an end game like this. Sometimes players will use three-move repetition in more equal positions when they're playing high-rated players. So if a 1500 is playing a 2000 and it's a pretty equal game, but you know maybe they're tired or maybe they just want to get a quick draw, they'll do a three-move repetition. But just once again, three-move repetition is when you have the exact same position on a board three times. If for some crazy wacky reason that same position is on move three, move eight, and move 
13, that is still okay. It doesn't have to be move 3, 4, and 5. It can be stretched out, but it has to be the same exact position, which is why a scenario like that is not very likely. So that is our second type of draw. Our third type of draw, let's go here first, is a, I'm going to give it a few names. It's a theoretical draw, uh, insufficient mating material. Those are two ideas. So this is the most basic version of a theoretical draw, okay? King versus king, we know it is a draw. It's also insufficient mating material because you can't mate your opponent's king with your own king. There's no way to do that because they can't, um, you know, come in contact with one another. So this would be considered a draw. And you could keep playing this out, but you wouldn't really because it is automatically a draw. If for some reason you're playing a game uh, in a theoretical endgame where you know for a fact it is always 100% of the time a draw and your opponent is trying to flag you, you pause the clock, you raise your hand, call the tournament director, anybody who's in charge, and you say, I claim a theoretical draw. And if it is a position like this, absolutely 100% of the time, they will say you're absolutely correct. This, correct. this is a draw. So uh, let's just give another example of this. Here's our bishop. A king and a bishop cannot mate a king alone. You could call a theoretical draw here. Same if this uh, if this bishop was a knight, or I can't go through every single type of theoretical endgame because they're mostly endgames, right? Because you have to have be able to claim insufficient mating material. But um, there are a number of ways. If we did a version where this king was, uh, there was a pawn trying to promote to h8, and it was a light square bishop, it would also almost always be a theoretical draw. But our third type of draw, like we just talked about, theoretical insufficient mating material draw is almost always. Uh, or pretty much definitely endgame positions. All right, our fourth type of draw is a stalemate. I made a video on stalemates um, a little while back, so if you want to check that out for a little more information, a little more practice on stalemates, feel free. Um, but a stalemate is, like I explained before, when uh, the opposing king or one of the kings is not in check, but they have no legal moves. So checkmate is when they are in check and have no legal moves, and stalemate is when they aren't in check and have no legal moves, and that is a draw. So in this position, if it's white to move, white plays h7, this black king has no squares to go to, he can't go to any of these squares, and none of his pawns are able to move, and this would be considered a draw. So like I talked about in my other video, uh, stalemates can be used to similarly to the three move repetition to get a draw when you know you're going to lose, and they are also something when you are winning to look out for in a position like this. White can just play uh, this move, king c6. Once this black king moves, white is going to get to promote and checkmate is going to come very, very soon. But that was just an example of stalemate. All right, that's our fourth type of draw. Now, I do have a bit of the game. We're not going through the whole thing because, spoiler alert, it is 114 moves. Insane. Absolutely insane. Let me click on right over to here. This is the position I'm interested in. All right. Our last type of draw is by far the most uncommon. I have played hundreds and hundreds of chess games in my life. I have seen and known people who have played two, three times as many chess games I've played in my life, and I have never in person seen a 50 move rule draw chess game. And that is because it is 50 moves where no pawn moves and no captures are made. It's crazy. Basically, if there are 50 moves pass, that means white moves, black moves. That's one move, like we all know. If that happens 50 times, and over the course of those 50 moves, not a single capture is made, and not a single pawn moves even an inch, the game can be declared a draw. So obviously, that takes a lot of notation. You've got to be keeping track of those games. But here I have an example. Of course, we're going to go through it quickly, because as you might imagine, it's pretty boring. There's no captures. There's no pawn movements. And these games often occur when not much can be done and both sides are playing super, super solid chess. But this game is actually crazy when we get to the end. It was titled Saved by the Bell. So we're playing with two super strong players, Ivanchuk and Komsky, both um, pretty famous grandmasters. They're both 2,700 rated at the time of this game. And now let's take a look. All right, I'm going to go through quickly. Here is our capture, okay? Rook takes c6. Rook takes c6 check. And now I believe they're going to be... Oh, there's one more. Here we go. Rook e6. 
bishop c7, bishop e2, queen a2, rook e7, bishop takes g3, move 62. There is not going to be a single capture or pawn move from this point forward. Let's take a look. We're just going to go. Oh, here we go. I apologize, guys. Rook takes g4. And now I believe it is going to be a pretty stagnant, a pretty boring chess game. We are just moving around, giving checks, protecting ourselves. It's actually a pretty interesting game. We're not going to study it in depth because I'm really just trying to show you nothing is happening in this game. No pawn moves, no captures. And this is, you can tell how many moves it's been. We started at move 62, 64 or something. We're at 104 moves. Okay, I'm going to slow it down a little bit. King c1, rook h7. We're approaching that 50 move mark. Okay, so bishop c4, bishop f6, rook f4, queen h3, check. You see that white king is getting into some problems. Also notice, checks do not reset the 50 move rule. A capture would reset the 50 move rule and start that counter at zero. A pawn move would. Checks, on the other hand, do not. So queen h3, check. King g1. This black white king is getting into a ton of trouble. Black is starting to make threats on this h2 square. Bishop f1 attacking the queen. Queen h7. Absolutely crazy. White is about to be checkmated on h2. They have to move that rook. But what did white do? Rook d4 check. 50 moves on the mark. End of the game. They claimed a draw. What would have happened if this rule wasn't in place? Well, first of all, if they go rook d4 check, they're going to be... Um, okay, the game ends. I can't add moves. They were going to be taken, and then black is going to be in a much better shape to win this game. They will win this game with that queen on h7. And if this rook moves uh, anywhere else, you know, this is checkmate with queen h2 checkmate. So that is why this game is indeed titled Saved by the Bell at the very last second. Um... Ivan Chuk was able to hit that 50 move mark. So I thought this game was absolutely incredible. I'd never seen it before. So just to sum it up, that is our fifth type of draw, okay? We have draw by agreement where both opponents agree. You know what? Let's take a draw in this position. You offer it after you've played your move. I offer a draw. You don't need to stick your hand out over the board. Give them the time to think. Second version, three move repetition. Same position, repeated three times. Our third type of draw is theoretical draw. King versus king or a uh, position where you can claim that your opponent does not have proper mating material. So a king and a knight versus a king, king and bishop versus king, uh, stuff like that. Fourth type of draw, check out my video on stalemates if you're interested in that. It is a stalemate when your opponent has no legal moves whatsoever and they're not in check. That is the combo for a stalemate. And this insanely awesome game that we just saw here, 50 move rule, not a single capture, not a single pawn moves for 50 moves straight. If you were on move 48 and you made a pawn move, that counter would reset to zero and you'd have to do it 50 more times. That is why it is so, so rare because most chess games uh, among especially high level players don't even make it to 50 moves. So it is pretty rare. But anyways, those are the five types of draws. Now you know, now you'll know every way to draw your opponent if that's what you're interested in. Of course, we wanna be going for wins in our chess games. But just so you have those ideas in the back of your head, they're always useful to know. It's always useful to know the rules of a chess game. So that's the end of this video. Five types of draws. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for coming.